welcome back today we're going to talk about the linux policy toolkit and also we were going to talk about the latest vulnerability that hits this important components of linux distribution so basically what is the linux policy toolkit or what they call it the p k oh wait no wait, let me move this it is the p o l kit so policy linux policy toolkit is actually nearly implemented in all linux distributions in ubuntu in debian in cent os you name it right so what's the function and objective of linux policy toolkit so it is much similar to sudo so in sudo when we want to execute a privileged action on the operating system and we are and it, if it happens if we are a normal user it's going to require us to provide the credentials much like much like in sudo right but in linux policy toolkit it's actually the same but with gui and more flexibility you can you can take it as the uac in windows uac user access control when you open a program on windows as administrator it will ask you for the password so it's the same here when you run command as sudo of course this is an example you will not type sudo in the command line you will just run a command in a non-privileged mode which requires a privilege and it's going to ask you for a password so it's much similar to sudo in function but with gui and more flexibility the main component that or through which the linux policy toolkit is summoned or spawned is the pk exec so the pk exec is a tool that's part of the linux policy toolkit that's used to run a command in a privileged mode for example you can run the user add command in linux to add a user called test if you run this command in a privileged mode you will you will prepend the command with the pk exec once you do that you will get a prompt here like this one and it will ask you for the password for the current user if you provide the password, you will pass the test and will be able to run the command in a privileged mode. All right, so why this is important and why are we talking about this? There was a recent vulnerability that hit Linux policy toolkit. And as I told you guys in the very first video, Linux policy toolkit nearly exists in all Linux distributions. So, which means the vulnerability affects all Linux distributions and it is very dangerous. The CVE 2021 for T34 allows for exploitation of PK exec, the main component of the um, Paul toolkit. What happens? It returns shell by providing a zero list of arguments. As you can see here, PK exec takes two arguments. The name of the program is the zero argument or it at index zero, and the second argument is at index one. So nearly nearly it takes like one two three four arguments but minimum you're gonna need to provide at least one argument at index one and we'll provide next two arguments it depends on the command we would like to execute in a uh, privileged node so what does this mean it means that the vulnerability here if we pro it's if it provides a zero list of arguments it means if we don't provide anything in here so we're gonna cross on let's select the red one so cross on user add and cross on test. This way we provide zero list of arguments. If we did that, we're gonna be able to return shell. Of course, it's not that simple. You can't just go about run pk exec and you will get shell. There is a specific design exploit to uh, exploit this vulnerability. We're gonna go over this. The exploit name is pawn git exploit. And actually, unfortunately, it is not exploitable remotely. So remotely, uh-uh, you can't do it. All right, which means, or which makes this exploit a local privilege escalation only usable and only useful if you manage to get the first foothold on the machine by exploiting some web servers or by uh, retrieving or, you know, cracking some sort of hash to log into an administrative panel, getting shell, and once you land on the machine, you can think about exploiting the pawn toolkit. So it's actually local privileged escalation exploit. 
and it actually exploits the main component of the Linux policy toolkit, which is the BKXec. We're going to see how this works in a while. So that was the explanation or the theoretical part of this video. Now let's go over the exploit, see how it works, and jump to the practical scenario. So close this one and let's take the exploit. This is the exploit, guys. This is the pawn kit. And if we, if we go over the exploit, it starts here. So we have the main function, okay? And if you notice, it makes use of the gconv path variable, which is very dangerous variable. And uh, much, 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 much of the time, if you use this variable, you're gonna be very careful when you use this variable in any code. So as you can see, the gconv path here calls the pawn kit, sets per execution permissions and execute but before that as you can see if you jump to line f print f as you can see it calls the shell now what's it called shell shell is actually defined here at the very first of the program it is actually a code that switches or changes the current user id to zero as a gid and zero as uid which means it's trying to get you root access and lastly as you can see it manipulates the environment, it adds the gconv path to the environment variables and execute shell. That's how dangerous it is. So what happened now? Let's summarize it. The pawn toolkit actually exploits the PK exec, okay, using the gconv path variable by trying to add a new environment variable and assign the shell value to it. And then it executes within the body of the program. So let's see how this exploit can be uh, executed in the machine and see how we can get root access before doing so it's very important to understand and note that this is part of try hack v room called pawn kit cve 2021 40 34 and in the exploitation part here is how it works and here is required to provide the flag so that is the material of this video now this is the IP address, this is the uh, username, this is the password to connect to the SSH server. And once you connect, you'll be able to exploit the vulnerability. Also, before jumping to the exploitation part, it's good also to read through the advisory released by Qualys Security Advisory about the pawn kit. You can go over that if you want more information. I'm going to put the link in the video description. But if you are good with the explanation I provided, then you don't need to read this. So, all right. So now I use the attack machine on Kali, uh, on uh, you name it, try hack me. And now I will connect to the vulnerable machine using SSH credentials I have been given in the very first of the challenge. SSH. Now we grab the IP address. Of course, the username is try hack me at base. And the password is already given in the challenge, so I'm going to copy that and paste it in here. So, right now, if we tap ls, we see the directory of the exploit, pawn toolkit. cd to pawn toolkit, and as you can see, we have the C code. If you go over the C code, so it's the same code we encountered at the GitHub repository. Okay. Now this is fine, no need to change anything. If you, The only thing you need to, to do is to understand how the exploit works in order to be able to patch it. So we close this one. In order to run the exploit, we have first to compile the C file. So this is the C file. You, you compile this file using GCC, provide the C file name, okay, and the output, we name it exploit. All right, ls. So this is the resultant file. If we type file exploit, we see the file actually is 64 bit executable file on Linux. Now, in order to run the exploit, all you have to do just type dot slash exploit and you will see you have root access. It is that simple. Now, let's retrieve the flag first. CV root get flag. 
so this is your flag so let's copy the flag and put it in the right place all right so is this all um yes but not quite sure yet so let me go over the patch then so yeah right now you have told me that this uh, policy linux manager exists on all linux operating systems and it is actually vulnerable so how do we patch it what do we do so how do we patch it basically in ubuntu operating system what you can do you can just wait let's make this bigger zoom in 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 okay so what you can do you can issue sudo apt update on um uh, ubuntu where is this one wait let me grab it from somewhere i need to change my keyboard layout because sometimes i cannot find the right character so sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade i'm not going to execute this because this is not my machine it is, it is the try hack me machine and if you if you suspect that you have a vulnerable version of of the policy toolkit all you have to do is just update you just update the uh, package manager and retrieve the latest patches now at the time of doing this video most of the linux operating systems now have patched are patched you can just issue this comment to make sure that you are uh, your system is not vulnerable now an alternative solution to this is to if, if you don't want to patch due to some business requirement or due to some uh, production requirement what you can do you can just say sudo chmod 0.755 so what does th what does this do it actually removes the sudo sud bit set from what do you think the pk exec the vulnerable component of the policy toolkit once you do that um actually you haven't patched the vulnerability but you will be able to get around this it's as a temporary fix so if you issue that as you can see it requires the password if try hack me now let's copy the password of the program itself of the uh, user try hack me is not in the sudoers file this is this is, it will be reported doesn't matter anyway we don't need to batch it right now this is for uh, because this lab is for demonstration it doesn't uh, it's not supposed to be secure right but that's a demonstration of how to, to just disable the suit bit set on the pk exec so once you run this command just run the exploit okay now if you run the exploit and you get root it means that the uh the pk exec was not the patch wasn't successful if you get if you exploit this if you execute this and you get the help menu of pk exec i mean if the output was something like that if the output was something like this it means that you have successfully patched the vulnerability so that is today's video guys short to the point and uh, important topic i hope you like that and i hope you find the video informative see you in the next video for sure